Hey everyone, welcome back to Immortal News. Today we're taking a look at the lives of some remarkable people who recently passed away. We also have a sad update regarding Grammy-winning artist Tyla. As always at Immortal News, we want to remember those who've made a difference. If their stories hit you in the feels, give the video a thumbs up. Let's share some respect and remember the amazing people we've lost. Number 8. Have you ever heard a song so perfect it seems like two singers are one voice? That was Steve Lawrence and his wife Edie Gourmet. Sadly, Steve passed away at the age of 88. Known for his smooth voice and boyish charm, Lawrence enjoyed a successful solo career, with hits like Go Away Little Girl topping the charts. He wasn't afraid to carve his own path, staying true to his love for classic melodies even as rock and roll gained popularity. But it was with AD by his side that Lawrence truly shined. Together they graced stages across the country, from nightclubs to Las Vegas and even Broadway. Their undeniable chemistry and musical talent won them a Grammy and an Emmy, along with the hearts of millions. Beyond their on-stage magic, Steve and Adie were a true partnership. Their love story spanned over 55 years, and Steve never wavered in his devotion to her, even after her passing in 2013. Steve Lawrence's legacy extends far beyond awards and hit songs. He was a talented singer, a captivating performer, and a devoted husband. Tributes are pouring in from across the entertainment industry, honoring his remarkable career and his enduring love story with Adie. Tributes to Steve Lawrence. Number 7. Have you ever dreamed of making movies? That's exactly what Sean Stone did. Sadly, this amazing young Hollywood producer passed away at the age of 31. But even though his time was cut short, his journey is one of following his dreams and making them a reality. His career, characterized by his ambition and creativity, saw him working with industry giants such as Bruce Willis, John Travolta, Kevin Dillon, and Mel Gibson. Born and raised in New Jersey, his passion for cinema led him to the University of Arizona, where he honed his craft before moving to Los Angeles in 2017 to chase his dreams in Hollywood. Starting his career at CAA under the mentorship of Dave Bugliari and Jack Wiggum, he then transitioned to Emmett Furla, where he played a crucial role in bringing thrilling stories to life. By 2022, Stone had risen to become a creative executive on features including Hot Seat, Wrong Place, and Wire Room. With his production of Cash Out, and an upcoming sequel poised to further cement his legacy in the action genre. Beyond the glitz of movie sets, he was a man of varied interests, from painting and sports to his love for hibachi, music and shark week. His passion for life and storytelling enriched not only the films he produced but also the lives of those who knew him personally. He is survived by a loving family. His parents David and Eileen, siblings Ashley, Justin, Michael, Mallory and Brian, along with brother-in-law Thomas Smith, sisters-in-law Christine Stone and Jenna Yeo, and his nieces Ella and Sloane. They, along with his colleagues and fans, mourn the loss of a remarkable individual whose creativity and drive inspired many. Tributes to Sean Stone. Number 6. Have you ever heard of the Brodol sisters? They were three amazing sisters who brought joy to people all over America, kind of like real-life superheroes with microphones. Sadly, we recently said goodbye to the eldest sister, Betty Brodel, who passed away at the incredible age of 104. Brodel's career, marked by her versatile talents as a singer and actress, spanned several wartime classics, including memorable appearances alongside her sister in Thank Your Lucky Stars and Hollywood Canteen. Born into a family where artistry flowed through the veins, with a pianist mother and a father who worked as a bank teller, Betty's early life in Detroit laid the groundwork for a career that would see her grace the screen in films like Yankee Doodle Dandy, Too Young to Know, and Cinderella Jones. Her journey in the entertainment industry was a testament to her resilience and talent, navigating the glamorous yet tumultuous waters of Hollywood alongside her sister Joan. Her performances, 
though perhaps overshadowed by the stardom of Joan Leslie, remained an essential part of the fabric that made up Hollywood's wartime narrative, offering solace and escape to a world embroiled in conflict. Beyond the screen, her life story is a narrative of dedication, a love for the arts, and an enduring bond with her family, particularly with her sisters Joan and Mary, with whom she shared not just a familial bond, but also the unique experience of growing up in the spotlight. As we remember Betty Brodel, her legacy is encapsulated not just in her cinematic contributions, but in the vibrant life she led off screen. Her century plus journey was filled with the melodies of a bygone era, the warmth of family, and the glimmer of Hollywood's golden years. Tributes to Betty Brodel. Number 5. Have you ever heard of American Idol or The Voice? These are singing competitions where amazing voices get a chance to shine. Sadly, someone who helped those voices shine the brightest recently passed away. Deborah Bird, a vocal coach, passed away at the age of 72. She was not just a coach. She was a mentor to Grammy winners, recording artists, and Broadway stars, leaving a lasting mark on the music industry through her dedication and expertise. Hailing from Cleveland, Ohio, her musical journey was rich and varied, contributing to the success of icons like Kelly Clarkson, Jennifer Hudson, and even legends like Bob Dylan and Barry Manilow. Her collaboration with Manilow was particularly significant, touring globally and hitting the charts with street singing. This achievement showcased her versatility and influence beyond vocal coaching, touching the lives of many through performance and songwriting. Barry Manilow, reflecting on her passing, expressed his sorrow, highlighting the profound personal and professional relationship they shared. Similarly, Clay Aiken, an American Idol contestant, emphasized her unparalleled mentorship, which extended beyond vocal techniques to include performance charisma and audience engagement. Her contributions were not limited to the stage. Her impact was felt in the classroom as well, where she shared her knowledge and passion for music with students at the Musicians Institute in Los Angeles and Berkeley College of Music. Her legacy extends beyond the performances and recordings, living on in the lessons she imparted and the lives she touched. Tributes to Deborah Bird. Number 4. Pioneering photographer David Johnson passed away at the age of 97. He was a resident of San Francisco for many years, capturing the essence of the Fillmore District in his detailed photographs. He was more than just a photographer. He was a chronicler of history. As the first black student of famed photographer Ansel Adams, Johnson documented important figures like W.E.B. Du Bois and Thurgood Marshall, and events like the March on Washington. His photographs weren't just images. They embodied the poignancy of people and their fight for freedom, according to his stepdaughter Candace Sue. His lens focused on his own community, creating a visual legacy of black San Francisco. His work is now part of prestigious collections like the Library of Congress. He wasn't just capturing moments. He was preserving a culture and a way of life. Born in segregated Florida, he overcame many challenges. He served in the Navy during World War II before pursuing his passion for photography. He defied barriers by enrolling in the San Francisco Art Institute's new photography program, becoming the first black student. His impact extended beyond photography. He was a champion for social justice. Sue highlighted his work in creating the Black Caucus at UCSF, fighting for equal rights for university employees. He also played a key role in the desegregation of San Francisco schools through a lawsuit. His legacy is multifaceted. He was an artist, an activist, and a voice for his community. His work continues to inspire generations, and his spirit of fighting for what's right will not be forgotten. Tributes to David Johnson, Number 3. Imagine a photographer who could capture the funny side of life, 
even in serious situations. That was Ramon Massats, a master photographer who recently passed away at the age of 92. Ramon's journey started in a small town in Spain. His family wanted him to take over the fish business, but Ramon had a different dream, to capture the world through a camera lens. He wasn't afraid to take risks, even sneaking money from his dad to buy his first camera. Ramon's photos weren't your typical postcard pictures. He liked to show the real Spain, the funny moments, the everyday struggles, all with a touch of humor. One of his most famous photos shows a priest trying to block a soccer shot from another priest, their robes flying in the air. It's a hilarious image that also makes you think about life in Spain at that time. Ramon wasn't just funny though, he was also brave. He took photos during a dangerous festival in Pamplona, Spain, where people run with bulls. His photos from that event are still considered some of the best ever taken. Ramon even got to work on movie sets, capturing behind-the-scenes moments of famous films. He also made his own movies, showing stories about ordinary people and the beauty of Spain's landscapes. Even though Ramon retired from photography later in life, his work is still admired today. His photos are displayed in museums all over the world and they continue to make people smile and think. Ramon Massat's story is a reminder to follow your dreams, no matter how different they may seem. He showed us the power of seeing the funny side of life and capturing those moments with a wink. Tributes to Ramon Massat's. Number two, have you ever heard of Eurovision, a huge singing competition where countries all over the world compete? Today, we said goodbye to a Maltese Eurovision legend, Joe Kutajar, who passed away at the age of 83. Joe's love for music started way back when he was a kid. He practiced and sang for many years and his hard work paid off. He became a famous singer in Malta, even performing in fancy places like London's West End. Imagine singing on a big stage with bright lights, just like your favorite stars. But Joe wasn't just any singer. He was also a kind and caring person who loved to perform with others. In 1972, he joined forces with another talented singer, Helen McAuliffe, to represent Malta at Eurovision. Their song, El Imhaba, which means love in Maltese, might not have won the competition, but it showed the world the beauty of Maltese music. Even though Joe retired from singing later in life, his music never stopped bringing joy to people. He recently reunited with Helen to perform El Imhaba again, proving that some friendships and songs can last a lifetime. Joe Kutajar's story is one of following your dreams, no matter how big or small. He showed us the power of music to connect people and bring happiness. So next time you hear a catchy song, remember Joe Kutajar, the Maltese singer whose voice will forever be a part of Eurovision history. Tributes to Joe Kutajar. Today's top headlines. News 1. Grammy-winning artist Tyla announced the cancellation of her highly anticipated world tour and Coachella performance due to a worsening injury. The South African singer, celebrated for her hit single Water, shared the disheartening news on Instagram, revealing her struggle with a painful condition over the past year. Despite seeking medical advice, Tyla faces a severe health challenge, prompting her to prioritize her long-term well-being over her scheduled performances. This decision, although difficult, underscores the importance of health in the demanding world of music. Fans can look forward to a grand comeback as Tyla promises a spectacular show once she recovers, ensuring ticket refunds and future plans to return to the stage. Her dedication to her craft and her fans shines through this tough decision as she navigates through recovery with hope and resilience. News 2. In a landmark decision that has reverberated across the entertainment industry, 
Rust armorer Hannah Gutierrez Reed has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in the tragic accidental shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The verdict, delivered after a swift deliberation by a Santa Fe jury, marks a poignant moment in the ongoing discourse around safety protocols on film sets. Gutierrez Reed, who has been acquitted of evidence tampering charges, now faces a sentence of up to 18 months in prison, highlighting the severe consequences of lapses in safety measures. This case not only underscores the importance of rigorous adherence to safety protocols, but also sets a precedent for accountability in the film industry, calling attention to the critical need for stringent oversight in handling firearms on set. As the industry mourns the loss of Hutchins, the outcome of this trial serves as a stark reminder of the paramount importance of safety in the pursuit of art. News 3. Gal Gadot, globally adored for her role as Wonder Woman, has joyously announced the birth of her fourth child, bringing another beacon of light into her family. The cherished moment was shared with her followers on Instagram, where Gadot revealed the name of her newborn, Ori, meaning, my light in Hebrew. This addition marks a significant moment for Gadot and her husband, Yaron Varsano, as they welcome the youngest sister into a loving family of now four daughters. Despite the challenges faced during pregnancy, Gadot's message radiated gratitude and love, celebrating the strength and resilience that led to this joyful outcome. The actress's personal milestones continue to enchant her fans, paralleling her dynamic career trajectory from fast cars in Fast and Furious to embodying grace and strength as Wonder Woman, and soon to captivate as the evil queen in Disney's upcoming Snow White. News 4. Sawir Seruan, a cherished icon who touched the hearts of many through her inspirational appearance on the Late Late Toy Show, has sadly passed away at the tender age of 12. Surrounded by her loving family in Koh Galway, Sawir's journey ended peacefully at home. Her courageous battle with osteosarcoma, a rare bone cancer, and her remarkable spirit made her a national treasure. Her story of resilience, marked by the loss of her leg and her embrace of life with a unicorn-decorated prosthetic, resonated deeply across the country. Sao Irsa's legacy, celebrated through her recognition as one of Galway's People of the Year in 2023, continues to inspire. As the nation mourns, tributes flow, highlighting the profound impact of her positivity and courage. Her family's request for privacy and their encouragement for donations to Galway Hospice in her memory reflect the immense love and respect held for Sao Irsa. Her light, though extinguished too soon, will forever shine in the hearts of those she touched. News 5. The boxing world is reeling after a bombshell announcement. YouTube personality Jake Paul will square off against heavyweight legend Mike Tyson in a fight nobody saw coming. Scheduled for July 20th and streamed live on Netflix, this epic clash pits youthful exuberance against unmatched experience. While opening odds favor the younger Paul, who boasts a winning record against fellow social media stars, Tyson's ferocious reputation and heavyweight pedigree can't be ignored. Despite being 30 years Paul's senior, Iron Mike promises an electrifying performance. This unprecedented matchup is guaranteed to be a spectacle, regardless of who emerges victorious. Number one. Imagine someone who could bring stories to life on stage using just sets, costumes, and actors. That was Remus Tuminus, a famous theater director who passed away at the age of 72. He was a giant in his field, directing over 70 plays throughout his career. His work wasn't confined to Lithuania. Audiences in Iceland, Italy, Israel, and many other countries were captivated by his productions. He was known for his innovative and thought-provoking interpretations of classic plays like Eugene Onegin and Uncle Vanya. Born in Kelma, Lithuania in 1952, Tuminus honed his craft at prestigious institutions in Lithuania and Moscow. He battled lung cancer diagnosed in 2014, but his passion for theater never dimmed. From 1979 he led the Lithuanian National Drama Theater, and later founded the influential Little Theater of Vilnius. Perhaps his most notable international work came as artistic director of the Vaktangov Theater in Moscow from 2007 to 2022. Under his leadership, the Vaktangov became a powerhouse in the Russian theater scene. His dedication was recognized with numerous awards, including the prestigious State Prize of Russia. His legacy extends far beyond awards. 
He was a visionary who pushed the boundaries of theater, captivating audiences worldwide. Tributes are pouring in from across the globe, celebrating his immense contributions to the art form. Tributes to Remus Tuminus.